Time for the Sunday Roundtable. And joining us this morning again are Marianne Marsh, Democratic political analyst, and Republican political analyst Rob Gray. So you just heard Anthony Amore. Republicans have their hopes pinned on this one statewide race. Do they have reason to do this, Marianne? Well, they have to go with Amore because he's the only one that's even close to his Democratic opponent, Diane DiZaglio. And that means he's 15 points behind in the race. So Republicans have to do it because otherwise they're surrendering the entire state to the Democrats who are going to sweep everything. And while they're not really waving the white flag of surrender, that's basically what it is. You're a Republican, Rob. Where are your hopes for him? I mean, what's that line in Star Wars? Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a Maury in this race, really. And, um, it, you know, he does have a chance, I think, the Berkshire Eagle, which is known as a pretty liberal newspaper in the western part of the state, endorsed him. He's getting other endorsements around the state. Uh, so it's probably the only chance at bipartis bipartisanism for unenrolled voters. Hopefully they'll vote for him. Do you think Weld singing that Zamore helped in the endorsement? <laughs> that, <laughs> I think but, Goes both ways. The endorsement helps. The singing was <laughs> suspect. Maybe just okay. Yeah. All right. Well, in their last debate here at WCVB this week, both Maura Healy and Jeff Deal said they'd cut taxes, but also neither would pledge never to raise taxes for a state now swimming in cash. Did any of this surprise you, especially Deal's refusal to take that pledge, Rob? Well, I thought Deal won the tax question. I thought he was very proficient painting Healy as somebody who's going to vote for question one, which is a multi-billion dollar tax increase and and she admitted that she's voting for it so I, I think he won the tax issue she's trying to be moderate on taxes say that she favors tax cuts uh, this is a new position for her um, she she has a very progressive record and supports higher spending so I think deal is right to question it and voters are right to question it. Marianne, we did hear Maura Healy dropping Governor Baker's name quite a bit last night. She did, but I think the hint is in the question, which is swimming in cash. Well, that might be true today. That doesn't mean it's going to be true tomorrow. It has been true in the past, may not be true in the future. So smart not to take the pledge, especially when you're looking at the headwinds that this country and this state are facing because of a global economic challenge, what's going on in the world, and Republicans threatening if they get back into office in Washington, they're going to do to the United States states in this state what Liz Truss did to the to the UK tank the economy wipe out everything irresponsible cut social security and medicare that was a very prudent stand to take although Amore did say, I mean um Amore, deal, deal. <laughs> I'm getting all my <laughs> candidates mixed up deal did say last night that he could not foresee a circumstances where he would ever have to raise taxes he didn't say he would never cut taxes I mean yeah, it's a I minor mean, little di he, he should have gone to spending and said I'm going to keep a lid on spending like Charlie Baker did and, and Maura Healy isn't. He didn't, he didn't make that pivot, but it would have been a good pivot for but him. Maura Healy, all night long, as we all witnessed, kept reminding everybody, build the billions of dollars she's returned to taxpayers. So she does have a record on that, on being fiscally responsible. So time ran out before we could ask the candidates about mass and cast this past week, so I'm gonna ask you both. Mayor Michelle Wu this week publicly asked the state to help resolve the continuing chaos and methadone mile. Which candidate is more likely to provide the 1,000 units of housing outside of Boston that she wants, Marianne? Well, first, it's not a surprise. Michelle Wu talked about this approach during her campaign for mayor. So that's not a surprise. Maura Healy obviously will do it. Maura Healy has a regional approach to housing and transportation. And you could see where Kim Driscoll could work with mayors around the state outside of Boston, Central Mass, even maybe Western Mass, to spread some housing around and try to do this because Michelle Wu's helped hundreds and hundreds of people who've been replaced by hundreds and hundreds of people more. That's the problem. Can you see Deal coming, uh, agreeing to do, to help, her, uh, to help her out with that? I don't see either candidate doing that. I mean, let's look at why are they coming to Boston, Mayor Wu. They're coming to Boston because you're giving them free meth pipes and free needles among all these other services and nobody's cracking down on the crime that is occurring there. So I think the solution is not housing in other cities. It's the Long Island shelter and getting it back up again. I'm not sure why Michelle Wu is not talking about that or getting the state to do some emergency spending right now to rebuild that bridge and get it going well, again. Well, give Michelle Wu credit for doing something. It was, I Marty, do. It I was actually, Marty Walsh who closed the bridge seven years ago. Yes. Never did anything, not one And I actually give anything. Michelle Wu some credit. I think there has been progress yeah. made on mass and cast, but I think you know, giving out free drug paraphernalia isn't a way to, to make more progress. Yeah, businesses and residents down there are definitely frustrated. Well, in what may be the last comprehensive poll on Massachusetts statewide races 
it looks like it could be a clean sweep for Democrats. So the question is, will this mean low turnout in an election that is on fire in other key states? Marianne? No, and we already have evidence of that. The fact is, before our early voting started yesterday, Saturday, over 151,000 people in Massachusetts have already voted. Record numbers of women and young people have registered. I expect Massachusetts to match or exceed um, the turnout for any midterm elections and approach the 2020 number here in Massachusetts. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with Marianne. I think uh, 2018 turnout, it's going to be that average non-presidential election year turnout, maybe higher. Much These higher. new voting mechanisms, vote by mail, vote early, support turnout being more constant and more static. We're, going, we're not done yet. More with the roundtable after this break.